Hi, so my presentation is over spirulina. So first of all, what is spirulina? It's a blue-green algae that can be used as a dietary supplement, and it grows in both fresh and salt water sources, such as natural and man-made lakes and oceans and subtropical climates. It's harvested and freeze-dried, and it typically takes the form of tablets, powders, and capsules. What does it look like? So spirulina in its natural form is in the picture on the left side, and then on the right side, the top right picture, is spirulina dried and used as powder, and then the bottom right picture shows spirulina dried and used as tablets. How much does it cost and where can you buy it? Prices can range anywhere from about $5 to over 100 and can be found in stores like Walmart, Target, supplement stores such as GNC, and online stores as well. What is the nutritional profile? Uh, the profile for one tablespoon of dried spirulina contains about 20 calories, about 4 grams of protein, about 1.5 grams of carbs, about a half gram of fat, and contains minerals such as calcium, iron, magnesium, phosphorus, and also vitamins C, B6, A, and K. What is the nutritional value? It contains all nine essential amino acids. It's high in protein, contains up to about 70% protein of dry weight, which is 10 times more than soybeans and 3 times more than beef protein. And it's a good source of vitamin B12, which is beneficial to vegetarians and vegans because they don't get that vitamin through animal products. More on the nutritional value, it has a high content of y linolenic acid, which is a growth factor for humans. It contains high levels of chlorophyll, beta-carotene, and vitamin E, and it is also high in glycolipids. So what makes it special? Spirulina is being promoted to prevent, treat, or cure things like high cholesterol, diabetes, depression, viral hepatitis, hypertension, and malnutrition. Considered by NASA as an excellent food source for space travel because it's compact and very nutrient-dense. It enhances the immune system and the ability to make new blood cells. It contains antioxidant properties, anti-diabetic properties, hinders the replication of viruses like herpes, measles, and HIV. It contains probiotic effects, anti-cancer properties, and anti-aging effects. Does spirulina have side effects? The majority of people who have used spirulina don't experience any side effects. However, people in the past have been concerned about the possibility of contamination of spirulina with pathogenic organisms and heavy metals, but the chances of contamination are really rare. Spirulina studies, there have been very few studies done on human subjects. The majority of the studies that I've researched dealt with animal subjects like hamsters, rats, and mice. One of the studies that I looked at over the anti-diabetic effects of spirulina used diabetic rats and they were fed spirulina over a course of about 100 days, which showed to lower blood glucose levels. Also, there was another study over the antiviral properties of spirulina, where hamsters with herpes simplex virus type 1 were fed with spirulina, and this showed to prolonged survival times and higher survival rates. Another study that I looked at looked over the anti-cancer properties of spirulina. In spirulina, spirulina was shown to inhibit chemical carcinogens in cheek pouches of hamsters. Uh, anti-cancer effects, there's only been one human trial, only one trial with human subjects. Antioxidant effects, there's been no in vivo human studies done, which means that more research needs to be done to confirm the effects of spirulina on humans because so many little studies have dealt with humans. And then I just created a poll using Poll Everywhere. It's just an opinion-based poll. There's no right or wrong answer. All it asks is, should spirulina be considered a superfood despite lack of sufficient ev evidence from human research trials? And to conclude, should spirulina be considered a superfood? The World Health Organization considers it to be one of the greatest superfoods on Earth. It's nutrient-dense and highly beneficial to undernourished populations, but it, there needs to be more research to confirm these health claims for humans. And that's all I have. That's why we're excited.